Well, welcome to Reality Coaching for Writers. The real stuff, no fluff. I'm Eddie Jones with my partner in all this madness, Diana Flagel. Uh, today, the question is, um, do you need an audio book to go with your paperback and your, your ebook version? Diana, welcome to Reality Coaching. Hey, good to be here, Eddie. So when you were uh, when you were representing clients, did any of them come to you with a, a question about audiobooks and whether they should do an audiobook? Well, in you know, when we did worked with traditional publishers, there was always a audiobook clause in the contract. So um, even though the clause was in there, it was rare at many years ago for um, publishers to uh, have those for every um, client, every, you know, author they worked with. They mostly were reserved at the time for the really well-published authors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think when we were at LPC, I don't remember how the, the contract was written, but I know we did the audio books. Most of the time we did the audio books uh, for the authors. And um that's a question I get a lot from, from clients. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm getting it right now from some clients who are getting their rights back. Um, and so maybe I'll just go ahead and jump in with that because that's a question that comes up a lot. Um, if you get your audio books, if you get your rights back for your, for your paperback, does that usually include the audio book rights? And most of the time, like you said, it usually does. If you get the rights back to your book, to the title, you get the rights back for just about everything. Right. Um, Print the ebook and the audio. Right. So if you, you know, if you've been published with a traditional house and you get the rights book, right, the rights back, you've probably got access to the audiobooks. And then the question is, well, where are the files? <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> who's got the files? Um, and I'll just go ahead and start with the easy one uh, with ACX. So this is a, a this is a company that's owned by Amazon. It's called ACX.com. So mm -hmm. if you're listening or watching, just go to ACX.com. Uh, they're a division of Amazon. And um, they're going to probably, if your book is published for ACX, it's simply a matter of sending them an email and saying, I've received back the rights to my title. This is the title of the book. This is, um, this is my author name. I have an account with ACX. And I would like for that audio book to be transferred to my ACX account. The ACX customer support will then contact the publisher that has the book in their account and they'll ask the publisher if it's okay to release the, the book into the other ACX account. And if the publisher replies back, yes, that's fine with us, then it's taken care of. It takes about 30 days sometimes for it to all get transferred over. But oh, okay. basically ACX is just moving, they're not even moving the files, they're just moving the, the metadata uh, information from one ACX account to the other. And so in about 30 days, you'll see the, the title appear in your ACX account. Um, so that's that's kind of the easiest way uh, to, to get to republish anything is because you're not even having to move files around. You're not having to put up a PDF or an ebook version or anything else. You're just kind of waiting for ACX to do their part. Um, well, Eddie, I want to jump in here because uh, when you're working with a large traditional publisher, there might be a cost involved for you to, you might have to purchase um, and pay for that file before you can transfer it and, and republish it. Um, because cover art is usually, you know, there's usually a cost involved because they've invested a lot in that process. They paid somebody to narrate the book and therefore uh, in order for you to then publish and um, receive you know the income on that title there they usually do there's a cost it's not yeah, that, prohibitive but there is a cost yeah that's a that's a great point because I do get emails from authors some, sometimes surprised that they have to pay anything to get mm -hmm. the files and you know in a nice kind of way we have to explain well wait a minute what you gave the publisher what you gave your publisher was probably a microsoft word document that has <laughs> since been massively massaged through an editing and proofing process and then it was formatted into a book right and then like right. you said you 
pay a cover designer to create the cover and their their time and artwork isn't free. Um, and so you're right, it's oftentimes thousands of dollars invested in a project mm -hmm. that does isn't isn't cheap. Um, so there is a cost involved in that. And I will say one other thing about ACX. Uh, and again, we're going to talk a little bit about the audio, but that, that's the purpose of today's uh, episode. Um, but ACX, like I said, it's, it's part of Amazon. Uh, Audible is also part of Amazon. So if you're in ACX, your book is automatically going to show up on Amazon's website as an audio book and on Audible. Um, but ACX requires a seven-year contract. So their contracts mm -hmm. are seven years. And if you if you do like we used to do in the past, and it's a little more difficult to do it now, but in the past you could do a uh, publishers and authors could do a royalty share process uh, process. So you have the title, for example, my titles. Um, we'll take mine. I, I take my titles. I put them in ACX, and I don't pay a narrator. I don't pay anything. I just put it out there as a bid and say, hey, who wants to go in half with me on this title? Um, and I'll show them the marketing campaign I've got for the audio book and they can read some of the samples and they'll go, eh, I'll take a chance on this. I'll, I'll donate my time to see whether or not I can make some money. And so oh, the, narrator, wow. the narrator basically is recording on their own time on the hope that they're going to make some money on the back end through the sales of the audio book. Okay. In order for that to be worth the narrator's time, it's a seven year commitment. Okay. Wow. So even if your publisher gives you back the rights three years after you've been published uh, and they give you the rights back, you're still obligated through ACX for the remainder of that seven-year contract. You can't oh. turn around and go, ah, I'm going to go narrate this book myself or get my cousin to narrate. No, 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 because that narrator is committed to that contract and so are you. Um, wow. That's good for everybody to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now. I have a question here, and maybe Eddie, this isn't the place, but when you go to um, ACX and you put that out there, do you audition narrators? Yes, that was the that was always the fun part of the process when I was at LPC. Was you know we would we would submit a project and ask for auditions, and then we would get the auditions and send them, put them in a file, a Dropbox file, so that authors could listen to the narrations. Right. Uh, I made the mistake early on of, of picking the narrator and I got in trouble for that. People were like, ah, uh, you know, we should have got somebody else. So I learned to just let the author pick, pick the narrator. You pick it because uh, it is their book. And um, so, yeah, we would do the auditions and then the, the authors would pick the narrator and that would be the one that we would use for the book. Um, and most of the time that worked out really well. Every once in a while you get a narrator that couldn't finish the project or they got into the book and they said, this is just not something I'm interested in doing. They back out, but that was really rare. I mean, it probably only happened a couple of times maybe. Um, but yeah, back then they used to narrate. The narrators would, I mean, used to audition. The narrators would audition. But like I said, things have changed. A lot of narrators now, they won't they won't do the free deal anymore because they've a lot of them have found they didn't make a lot of money. They were putting mm. a lot of time involved and not sure. making a lot of money on the back end. So it's much more difficult. And, and don't let me forget, we're going to come back to this point later in this episode. So don't let me forget that one point, okay, about why the narrators are backing out. Okay. So the, so the other company that, that, uh, that you can go with if you want to uh, do an audio book is Find Away Voices. Um, and I think I've got that correct. We're going to put these links up on, at, uh, on the episode so you'll be able to find them. <laughs> but Find Away Voices, um, they either merged with Spotify or they got purchased by Spotify. I'm not really sure. I haven't got the back end of that yet, but they're now, they're now affiliated with Spotify. Um, the, the audition of narrator is there. Um, is, is really not an option anymore. That's kind of gone away from findaways. Uh, so there you are going to have to pay a narrator. Um, and so it's, it's a little, it's not as convenient as ACX used to be, but findaways have better distribution of your title. With ACX, you were kind of limited to Amazon and Audible. Find a, way, okay. find a Way Voices, your book will be available on Amazon and Audible, but all the other audiobook uh, distributors at the same time. So it's a, it's a wider spread of distribution for your audiobook, but you are going to have to pay some money up front, <clears throat> probably for a narrator, uh, if you go with Find a Way Voices. Um, 
And then the question comes up. So if you're going to do ACX, you may get an audition for free and you may split 50 50 with the uh, with the narrator. That may still be a possibility or you're going to pay a narrator through final ways or the other option is. And I hate to even suggest this. You narrate your own book. <laughs> and, now, and, why? Explain why you hate to suggest that. Well, I hate this because I bet you 80% of the time when we had a book with LBC, the author raised their hand and said, I want to narrate my own book. And I would always go, great. Have you ever narrated any book before ever? And, no, no, no. But I, I know how the books read and everything else. And I said, wonderful. I said, just understand it's about five hours of narration time for every one hour of produced book. And that's at a minimum. And wow. that's that's for the professionals that do this for a living, right? So if you've never wow. done it before, and that because when you're talking about five hours, you're talking about doing the narration, right? And getting it correct, which is not as easy as people think. It's easy to speak. It's much more difficult to read out loud exactly what's on the page, right? Yes. If you've ever tried to do that, you know how you either add words or drop words, which mm -hmm. is reading. Right. I mean, try to read a passage of scripture and see whether you hit every word. It's tough mm -hmm. unless, unless you do this on a regular basis. <clears throat> so you've got to be able to read it correctly and you've got to have the inflection right. And you've got to have the tone and the quality and all this that we're doing on, with the Zoom, you know, with this. And after you do all that, then you have to go back into the production side and edit. It, right. Now you've got to go, OK, this this one didn't work. I've got to re-record this, drop it in, merge the two files. And so it's it's a big undertaking if you've never done this before. Um, and I think probably when I was at LPC, if we may have had three authors that narrated their book. And most of them, if the three of the three, I think two of them were public speakers. Okay. So. So they already had a studio where they could go to. One of them did literally go to a recording studio and recorded her book in the studio with everything that they had, sound engineer, queuing up things, everything. Um, and it went pretty quickly. She was able to do the book in about six months. It only took her six months to record an audio book that was about 50,000 words. So what I come six. back to, six months. Well, she was doing other things, but what I come back to, so, so the point to the authors, you know, the people that are listening to this is, if you're going to record your audiobook, that just means you're not going to be writing during that time. You're not going to be doing something during that time that may right. pay you more money than you recording your own book. Um, but again, if you're a speaker, odds are people want to hear you speak because they're used to you speaking anyway and paying pay to go to the event and all that kind of thing. But right. if you're a if you're just a fiction author, my recommendation is get somebody that reads the story, gets the feel for the story, and they do this professionally and let them be the narrator, you know, and let them do a really good job. Um, I was fortunate with the Caden Chronicle series when I when I went back and had the audiobooks made for that one, that I got uh, a guy named, uh, he was, I think at the time he was 14 years old, and he, he was the voice for my main character because my main character was 14 or 15 years old. Right, and, right. And Zane, he, he nailed it. I mean, he had the right inflection and he sounds like, he sounds exactly like my character. So I was very fortunate when I got him. Uh, and that's kind of what you're aiming for. Right, yes. And accents and all of that. I'll tell you as a uh, audiobook user, um, I have once in a while come across a narrator that did such a poor job, I quit listening, you know. So quality and having someone who knows how to inflect their voice and and translate the emotion of the story to your ears and uh, in a professional way, I, you know, I would definitely encourage people to hire someone instead of, like you said, doing it yourself yeah you know? absolutely <laughs> yeah and, and even when you've got a professional narrator that you've picked um <clears throat> you're still gonna have to go back and you know you know if you've got an eighty thousand word book i think it's about three and a half three hours worth of listening time maybe three mm -hmm. and a half you know depending on how they stretch it out so let's just say three and a half hours of listening time uh, you're gonna have to go back listen to every recording while you're reading your book 
and then mark up the changes that the narrator needs to go back and fix. Because again, we don't always get it right when we read. So we may drop words or add a word. And if you're reading along as an author, you're going, well, whoa, 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 I didn't say it that way. That's not how it's written. So you have to mark the timestamp as is, change to, send that back to the narrator. They have to go back and re-record, drop it into the source file so that it matches, right? Uh, so even if you don't narrate your own book, there's going to be production time involved on your behalf just to make sure that it's, it's correct. Well, and again, anyone that is with a traditional book publisher and gets a contract, this is all part of why the percentage you get on each audiobook is set at what it is because of the cost involved. So when you're with a traditional publisher, they will do this for you. The person who edited your book and has worked with you on the edits to put it into print, they know your voice. They know what the story is because they've been immersed in it. And they're going to be the ones doing this read through and checking and, and making sure it is exactly what, you know, um, the book, the printed book is. So that all goes into uh, why the percentage is set at what it is that you earn. So just realize behind all of that, there is a business model that they're going by and a cost effective, you know, strategy they're using. They're not, you know, always trying to take advantage of you, but these things cost something. Right. Yeah, that's true. So you've got acx.com, you've got find a way voices. That's the other option. And, and now this is the, um, disruptive event, I can't remember the term that we use when, a, when an industry is disrupted, you know, like Amazon disrupted the publishing industry. Right. Um, so what's happened now with audiobooks, and we kind of hinted at this, you and I in some communication before we came on, is artificial intelligence, AI. Mm -hmm. now, now, there's a lot going on in AI, um, but specifically when it comes to narration of audiobooks, um, it's AI is further along than it is in other areas. And part of it is because for a while we've had text to speech applications on our on our laptops, our Macs, our right. PCs, iPads, yep. smartphones. People are talking to Alexa. Alexa's talking back. That's text to speech, right? So mm -hmm. AI has had years at this point um, to practice the text to speech part of AI. And they've gotten really good at it. They have gotten really good at it. Uh, and so I'm just going to go ahead and be honest here and say, I have went gone ahead and paid for a subscription each month to do artificial intelligence reading on some of my blog posts because I wanted to see how good it, they could do it. And if they do it well <laughs> enough, I may go ahead and just let them read the next, the next pirate novel that comes out to see if they can pull it off. I'm looking for a pirate voice. I haven't found one yet, an artificial intelligence pirate voice, but I'm sure there's one out there or there will be one soon. Um, but if you can find an AI voice that does a really good job, that cuts out the narration part of it, right? Mm -hmm. Now you're not paying for a narrator and you're not right. having to be the narrator. All you're having to do is go back and make sure that the narration matches the words and the beauty of AI is they always match the words. At least that's been my experience so far. Whatever's on the page, that's what it's reading. It's not adding things. It's not taking anything away. So that's the good side of it. The bad side is that ACX, Audible, Spotify, Find A Way Voices, uh, Apple, for example, a lot of those companies are coming up and going, whoa, 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 we won't accept an AI read book. Oh, we're not. We're not going to accept artificial intelligence books. And so now there's a legal issue. There's a moral issue behind it um, right. because you're cutting out the income of a lot of narrators who practice this. And now all of a sudden they're going, oh, there's no work. People are switching to AI. Um, so I don't know where it's going to come down on that, but I just throw that out there. Be very careful before you go and invest a lot of time and effort in an AI read book because you may find that Find A Way Voices won't accept it. You may be stuck with the book and can't get it out there. Um, yeah. Well, and Eddie, that brings up, you know, um, and we're going to have a discussion on uh, 
artificial intelligence replacing the writing process. Uh, you know, in colleges, they're already dealing with AI writing essays, and um, there's so much that uh, it's, you know, there's 350 million jobs, they said, in jeopardy in the next couple years, because or year even, a um, couple years that AI is going to replace place so there's there's a lot of alarming things but just as amazon and them are putting stop gaps in place um i think in christian publishing uh on a forum that i'm a part of a writer's forum they were talking about this and uh the one gentleman shared an article written by a a, a sermon that a rabbi in new york city um had an ai uh, right for him and the comment that he made was so beautiful because he said that it did not have and he used the Hebrew word nefresh which means soul he said AI does not have a soul and so um, that is one thing that as a Christian writes they're writing you know with a soul and under the influence of the Holy Spirit so um, I, there will be a lot that it cannot replace, but it's kind of crazy how well, like you said, they can do things. And another writer said she's playing around with it. And she said, right now, she had to put so many of the ideas in that she said she would have just as, it was just as much book as writing the book on her own, but she was still impressed with just putting the ideas in and what the AI intelligence came up with so we'll talk more about that later yeah. diana thank you uh i see you've got a different environment this week so hopefully next week you'll be back at the beach <laughs> yes i'm landlocked today watching my friend's cat and house yeah. sitting, so yeah all right well listen we'll see you guys next week chatting in and uh have a great week